everybody, welcome to another Fireside Chat edition on YouTube, and this time we're talking about Apollo aboard the Disney Dream. of Magic Land Vacations, the travel planning genies. You know we love to help families like you save time, save stress, save hassle, and create extra magic on those Disney and Universal destination vacations and more. And instead of doing a normal dining review of Apollo, I wanted to do like fireside style like I did kind of over at the Palm Hard Rock and uh, just got through from having the most amazing brunch ever at Apollo and I can't wait to tell you all about it. If this is your first time watching, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of our amazing content that we have. And I'm really curious if you are interested in Dining Apollo or you've Dining Apollo, I would love to hear from you. All right, so let's get into it. So for starters, let me just tell you what to expect at Apollo. Now, Disney Cruise Line is known for having more inclusive elements in terms of dining than any of the other cruise lines. And it's huge bang for your buck. Apollo is one of the few add-ons where it does cost just a little bit of extra moolah to experience it. Now for brunch right now, it's only $45 extra per person, so it's not a whole lot. And like all the other dining restaurants and establishments on board the Disney Cruise Line, you can order whatever you want off of the menu besides like beer and wine and that kind of thing. And it's not going to increase the price. Now, this is one of those dining locations that you want to actually book before you ever step foot on the cruise if you can, because they go really, really fast. These reservations go fast. The restaurant is not that big especially for brunch, which is my personal favorites. And that's what we did. Now, if for whatever reason, you're not able to book a dining reservation on board Palo prior to actually boarding the cruise ship, you can go call zero on the room phone and call dining and ask them if they can fit you in. Or now with the more advanced version of Disney Cruise Lines app, you can actually talk with a member of the guest services team or dining team to see if you can actually add on a dining reservation, which is exactly what we did because we did not have a dining reservation when we came on board the Disney Dream. And we asked a dining uh, person through the chat and they were more than happy to oblige and we got our dining reservation. Now it is important to note that Palo is one of the dining locations where you do need to have specific dress code attire. So ladies, uh, they suggest having like pants, capris, skirt, and a, a blouse or some kind of collared shirt. For men, they prefer to have uh, slacks or dress pants and a collared button down shirt or a polo shirt. Or you can have jeans as long as they don't have any holes in them. This is exactly what I wore. I was perfectly fine in inside dress code um, attire for going to Palo today. Now, they will turn you away if you are not in proper dress code attire. Absolutely no shorts and no tanks will be allowed in Palo. So make sure you adhere to the dress code because we don't want any frowny faces. We want all smiley faces when we go to dine at Palo. Now we had actually dined at Palo before prior to COVID and it was an all you can eat, really, really, really incredible buffet. They had so many kinds of pastries and antipastas and, and fruits and veggies and just so many assortment of things. I really didn't know what to expect when I went back in to dine at Palo for this brunch because it is not buffet service anymore. You actually order off of the menu. Now, the really cool thing, like I mentioned before, is you get to order whatever you want off of the menu, more than one thing. You can have as much as you want. And we ordered a lot. We ordered some more lunch type food. We ordered some more breakfast type food, which is why it's called brunch, right? So let's talk about what we ordered and we'll go through each one of them. All right, now for starters, you do get some bread service. Now, 
I didn't know what to expect from the bread. I thought it was going to be breakfast bread. It was not breakfast bread. However, I will give a shout out to one specific piece of bread that was really delicious. It was basically almost like a focaccia bread, but it had some uh, onions, like roasted onions on top and some blue cheese and some regular cheese on top. That was really, really delicious. They also had some sticks in there, some crackers. Now, you do get to choose one complimentary beverage for your brunch. You can have a mimosa or you can have some sparkling apple cider, non-alcoholic. We chose the sparkling apple cider, the non-alcoholic, because we are saving ours for that uh, banana monkey. The dirty monkey. The dirty monkey. Thank you. We never can't remember the name of it. We always order that we're at the pool. I did. The dirty monkey. Okay, so anyway, so we have the apple cider, we have the bread, and then it came time for our appetizers, if you will. We ordered the basically the cheese and the meat. It's not a charcuterie board uh, per se because it doesn't come with crackers, which is normally what you have a charcuterie board, but it has prosciutto and all the different kinds of meats and cheeses that were really good. And you have the bread, so if you want to combine the two, you absolutely can do that. Then we moved on to our next round where my husband got a omelet that was tomato and onion. And I wanna say that I tried the omelet and those eggs were fluffy. All right, those were really some fluffy eggs. Very, very well, well created, well crafted omelet situation going on at Palo. After the omelet and the charcuterie board, the next course that we decided to have was a Italian sausage pizza. The pizza was very, 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 very good. And it really did, I think they used a wood burning oven, at least that's what it tasted like to me, a wood burning oven, very fresh Italian sausage, very delicious. Definitely big enough to share. We ate about half of it because we knew we had to pace ourselves for what was coming next. Now the next course that we had was full on Italian lunch. My husband had the Bolognese lasagna, which was absolutely delicious. Rich, um, soft noodles, texture, just, just delicious Italian food. I had the chicken parmigiana, and I have to tell you, that was the best chicken parmigiana I've ever had in my whole, whole, whole entire life. It was delicious. And they also surprised me because they had this like cheesy risotto in there that if you weren't paying attention, you would have totally missed because it was with the marinara sauce. But that was fantastic. It was so good. My husband and I ate every piece of the lasagna and the chicken parmigiana. There was nothing left. They were absolutely delicious. We then had our breakfast dishes, which sounds kind of counterproductive, uh, but our waiter who was amazing, Stefan from France, was like, the waffles are pretty heavy. You should save those for the end. So we were following his advice and I ordered the apple cinnamon waffle and my husband ordered the strawberry waffle and I didn't really know what to expect. I was thinking maybe they, they would put the strawberries or the apple cinnamon like baked into the batter and it really wasn't quite like that. What it was was a really beautiful, huge Mickey, I mean, these are like Mickey waffles on steroids, huge Mickey waffles. And then our waiter, Stefan, poured the apple cinnamon compote on top of the waffle and then he did the same thing and poured the strawberry compote on top of the other waffle and then we tried them and they were good they were really good i wouldn't say that they were like anything like spectacular incredible and like out of this world the compotes were really well done but a waffle is just a really really good waffle it was a little bit crispy for me i would have liked my waffle to be a little bit less well done but it was still very delicious nonetheless. And that whipped cream was on point. We were still not done eating. <laughs> because you get all included in the price, right? So you gotta eat as much as you actually want. So after we had the waffles, then it was time for dessert. Now we actually followed Stefan's advice and I had the uh, chocolate cake that has like the gooey ganache in the middle. I don't even remember what that's called. There's like a special name for it. Amaretto. Thank you, voice. You're welcome. <laughs> Amaretto. And then we also had their classic tiramisu. 
and uh, the tiramisu was absolutely delicious. Probably the best tiramisu I've ever had. However, I am not a huge tiramisu fan because I stay away from anything that kind of tastes remotely like espresso or coffee. Not my jam. However, I did absolutely, lo I love chocolate. I love chocolate and that chocolate was so good. And it normally comes with espresso ice cream, which I just told you I don't do espresso. So instead I asked for vanilla ice cream. They were more than happy to oblige. It was absolutely delicious. And that concluded our monster brunch at Pompolo. And I have to tell you, the service is amazing in all the restaurants aboard the Disney Dream. Uh, but when you go to Apollo and Remy, there really is like a whole, a whole different vibe just because of the atmosphere and the quality of the food is like, Disney food quality is already up there, but it's just another level. Now, I will say just a little bit about Remy. If you guys are thinking about Remy, you're wondering about Remy, Remy is around $125 to $150 per person. And that does not include like wine pairings and that kind of a thing. And it is like several different courses for you to try. It is really bougie, all right? And when I say bougie, like you have like really small portion sizes. It's very, very rich tile food. If you are a steak and potatoes, Texas kind of person like I am, probably not gonna be your jam. If you love to, to be adventurous with your food and try a whole bunch of exotic cuisines, uh, then definitely Remy is something you might wanna try. And if you're celebrating an anniversary or a honeymoon or a special occasion while you're on board uh, the ships that do have Remy, such as the Dream and the Fantasy because uh, the Wish and the Wonder, excuse me, the Magic and the Wonder do not have have Remy, then that's something you might want to consider. Thank you guys so much for watching one of our another amazing videos. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any of our amazing new videos. We are Magic Land Vacations with Disney and Universal Travel Planning Experts. And make sure if you haven't already, check out our website, MagicLandVacations.com. There you can schedule a consultation with one of our amazing experts. And guess what? We do way more than just Disney and Universal Vacations, so definitely want to check us out there. Also, make sure you go to our private Facebook group, Travel Genie Fan Club, where we do giveaways and trivia contests every single month. And of course, I have some two other amazing videos for you to watch, one right over here and run right over there. One right there and one right there. I think I would start with that one or maybe that one or maybe that one.